To kick things off, I have a rap from my Birmingham fam. Now you're thinking I didn't come for a poetry slam, but I'm here with my man, Nathan and Graham, dropping this rhyme and using this time to expand your mind. Because the news sounds threatening, all this talk is deafening, inflation's in recession, they're like yin and yang. Wu Tang said protect your neck, I say protect your profit, so you could stay on top of it and not have a drop in bank deposits. That'll make you hit pause and quit, because business is not a video game, and if your agents explodes in flame, it would be a shame. So I'm here with the Konami code to keep your profits in beast mode. I'm getting ready to load. So up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, let's start this. All right, so we're talking finance, and finance could be a boring subject, so we have to start off with something really fun. And that's me making a fool of myself rapping. So, <laughs> all right. What, what, the name of the talk is Inflation's Recession in Business, Oh My, and it's by me. That's why my name's on the slide. Um, but in the last week, uh, there was a lot of information that came out, and I'm thinking, uh, should I change some things up a little bit or should I not? And um, I had a conversation with, after I did a talk one time, and it was a really fact-based talk, and it went really well. And I think it was for WP Care Market, I can't remember. But uh, Beth Livingston came up to me and she texted me and she's like, hey, Nev, she says, you know, I love your talks, but um, it wasn't like, there wasn't anything that made me feel really positive about going forward, anything reassuring, and you're always so reassuring. So I explained some things to her. She's like, oh, that's great. And so a lot of positive news came out this week. And I was like, man, it would be great to share this with people. So uh, I had this question, to remix this whole talk or not to? And I did. So um, if it's not exactly what you're expecting, I apologize. You could uh, uh, hate me later. So, so we had a whole um, uh, Wizard of Oz theme going on, really professional design slides. It looked really, really nice. And, then, uh, and I am not a designer by any stretch of the imagination. So uh, half your slides are going to look like this. <laughs> Uh, Jesse just said that, uh, oh, so branded nicely. Well, um, yeah, some of, them will, some of them will be like this. So, um, so we scrapped the Wizard of Oz theme, and um, we went with, like, because the title was based off of that whole zoo commercial, Lions, Tigers, and Bears. I said, I could rock with this. I could do something with this. So that's what we did. And uh, so let's talk about um, uh, inflation. And like I said, some of these slides are going to be really rough looking. Um, and what we'll talk about inflation is like a lion. And we all know that uh, we've seen inflation for the last year. It's kind of been uh, what, what, what kind of bite it could take out of our business, out of our profits, out of our personal life. So we want to talk a little bit about inflation. But um, we're not going to talk as much as we were because here's some great news. Uh, inflation seems to have um, died off. And... Uh, so that, that's definitely great. It doesn't seem to be that I'm um, not going to be as big of a concern this year as it was last year. Stay on presentation. Um, and so this is a very poorly formatted chart because I threw this in a slide uh, yesterday. Um, but what it's telling us is like right here is where we are. And we see inflation by December coming down to 3.1%. And it's been around 8 you know, when we've all had our businesses for the last like decade or so, it's been around two and a half. So we're going back to a world, hopefully, that we're used to living in. All right. But if you've ever seen a movie and, uh, you know, where they, they, they kill the bad guy and the bad guy's laying on the ground dying and the hero's celebrating and with his last breath, he picks up a gun and he shoots the hero. And that's sad. That sucks. And we don't want that to happen. Um, for this presentation, I had a lot of fun with Dolly, too, to, to create, like, pictures. And so I said, a, dying with his la a, li a lion dying with his last breath sw swiping his paw. And this is what I got. So even though a lion is on the floor dying, it could still hurt you. So we want to talk a little bit about inflation and how to be careful with that. So, um, but first, I want to play a game, because I like games. And it'll give us some perspective on this whole matter. All right. So I want you to tell me what year this is, and I'm going to give you some clues, okay? So just shout it out. You know, Mario Brothers first came out. I'm not going to say if you're right or not until I get to the end, but keep on shouting. So um, MTV first came out. Okay, okay. 
princes die, no, princes die and Prince Charles got married. Raiders of the Lost Ark was the big, big movie at the theater. The ubiquitous post-it note was invented. And then Dallas was the hit TV show. It was 1981. You had it. A couple people had it. I know she had it. So, um, and the reason why I want to bring up 1981 is because that's really the last time we've had inflation. So it's a new, new, new concept for us to run a business in an inflationary environment. So, because I, I don't think anybody in here has been running a business for a uh, WordPress business for 40 years. So, <laughs> uh, and maybe some of you weren't even born. So, um, because here's, and here, here, when I came across this, I love interesting facts, when I came across this, a cost of, um, a, cost of a gigabyte of data storage then was $300,000. Now, make that, uh, gross that up for today's dollars, that would be like uh, over a million dollars. It wasn't so much the price that kind of shocked me in that. It was like that back in like 1981, they actually had a gigabyte of storage. <laughs> I mean, think about that. We had floppy disks that had like kilobytes on them, and they actually had a gigabyte. That's shocking to me. Anyway, so, and then uh, Oklahoma, Michigan, Georgia, and Alabama were the top you know, football teams. So I guess some things never change. <laughs> Um, all right, so 2008. So what, what, what happened in 2008? Well, let's see. WordPress was five. And um, maybe a couple of you had businesses that were in WordPress back in 2008, but only a lot of people were. You know, um, Facebook was four. And it just kind of, I think, in the last year opened up to the public, you know, because it started as like a college thing. Um, the iPhone was brand new. The whole idea to have a computer in your pocket was brand, brand, brand new. So if you can imagine a world without an iPhone, um, I know your kids can't. Um, these businesses right here that we use like almost in our daily life, Slack, Uber, Pinterest, Square, um, Instagram, they weren't even around. So now that's, except for the baby recession, the little two-month recession we had in, um, you're scaring me that we had in uh, 2020, um, uh, it was the last time we had a recession. So we really don't, uh, haven't run a business through a recession. We've been very lucky. So um, now the purpose of my talk then is to um, make sure that when you look at your financial statements, when you look at your profit at the end of the year, I hope you look at your profit at the end of the year, when you do, you're not going to look like this when you see it. We avoid this face. We, we want you to be happy. We want you to be like, oh, that was a good year. And not like, ah, oh, crap, what happened? So um, now uh, when I came here, when I left my house, all right, and I have to go to the airport to fly here, and it's, I've gotten to my house to the airport in 25 minutes. I've done it maybe once or twice, all right? But I know that it's taken me 45 minutes to get to the airport, okay? It's going to be, um, there's going to be a traffic. I'm going to, and so if I don't give 45 minutes, if I don't plan for that, if I don't account for that, I'm going to have a lot of problems making flights. So, and that's like how we should look at recessions and inflation, these kind of things you'll see, they're going to happen. You're not going to be able to stop them from happening. But if we prepare for them, they're just like traffic going to the airport. I've never missed a flight because I always leave with like 45 minutes to an hour to get to the airport. So I never, and I'm never screwed by the traffic. And that's what we could do with inflation if we prepare. Now, um, I did have a friend that, believe it or not, I have friends, um, that uh, prepared for a marathon. She got really, really serious about preparing for this marathon. She prepared for like seven months for this marathon. And then... When she was supposed to run the marathon, she, um, she had some family issues, and she couldn't do it. So, um, and then you say, oh, man, that's terrible. She, she trained every day for seven months to, to do this marathon, and she couldn't do the marathon. Well, what happened, though, was her blood pressure came down, her cholesterol came down, she had more energy to play with her kids, she, she was able to stop taking the medicine for those stuff. So her life was, she was much, much stronger in life, even though, she, even though the event she was prepared for didn't happen. Why do I tell you this story? Because all this stuff I'm telling you, if, if we don't have a recession for a while, if inflation goes away tomorrow, all this stuff I'm telling you, if you do, will make your business stronger, no matter what happens. So it's a win-win. You either 
glide through the recession or you're super strong going into, you know, business as is. All right, so let's, um, let's, let's, let, let's go nuts. So, <laughs> all <righty. laughs> Fun times. <laughs> all my fun slides. All right, so where, where, where are we at? Where we are here. So, um... So remember the days that we used to have commercials on TV and we used to fast forward through stuff? And um, so you had three minutes of commercials and you had three speeds on your remote. You had two times, four times, and eight times speed. You know, you, you hit it once and you get to the commercial for 90 seconds. That was too slow for everybody. So you hit it twice and you get through those commercials in 45 seconds, okay? But then you got ballsy and you're thinking, you know what, I really want to get through these commercials. So you hit it twice and you went eight times speed. And what happens? You got through, your, you got through the commercials in 11 seconds. All right. So what really happened is you were well into your show before you realized you had to hit the play button. <laughs> so, um, and that is like what happens with your business and with inflation and your costs. So the speed of business, it just went ham on the fast forward button. Okay. So... What that means is we can't put our profits on autopilot. In, in the years past, if it made money two years ago, it made money today. It's not that case if you're dealing with an inflationary environment because costs are going up, okay? And if your costs are going up like re uh, really fast, then those, pro those, projects, those, profit, uh, those projects and services that you deliver that used to be profitable, they might not be profitable anymore or they might just be breaking money. They might be wasting your time. Okay, so um, here's a quick way to, and this is as mathy as we're ever going to get. This is, here's a quick way to keep an eye on that. You take your sales, you divide it by your profit, you multiply it by 100, it gives you what's called a net profit margin. And you're like, Nev, great, what does that number mean? Well, nothing, <laughs> just as a number. But you, you track that number over a couple months and you see if it's 40%, and then it drops to 38, then 36, then 35, then 31, then 23 then you see that costs are probably eating away at your probably your costs are probably going way way up so you would ha you should you know adjust that you know uh price or uh, like what, you know with vendors whatever you're using so you this is a good way to keep an eye on profits so that they don't start eating in your profits so you don't get sad at the end of the year all right so I'm in, this is, those are nicely designed slides. Here's my slides <laughs> where I'm just writing in black, uh, text. So what happens to get inflation under control, though, we have to, to weaken inflation normally weakens the economy. And I'm going to tell you a story here, like a quick 15 second story here. So take a glass, uh, a glass bowl and you're going to put water in this bowl. Okay. And you have a stove top. Okay, and you have to keep this water at like a certain temperature. You want to heat it up a little bit. But that glass bowl says do not put on a stovetop. But you have no other glass bowl, so you're going to use it anyways. So you put the water in the glass bowl, and you know if it gets too hot, the glass is going to shatter and go all over the place. So you put it on, it starts getting too hot, and you're like, oh, i got to cool this down. You put it in ice or you put it in cold water, what happens? It shatters because you can't bring glass really hot to really cold. So then the key is to be able to just cool that glass enough so that it doesn't get too hot and it doesn't get too cold all of a sudden. That's a PhD in monetary theory in 15 seconds. So, because <laughs> that's what they're trying to do. And they fail miserably at it all the time. So what happens is, you know, to weaken inflation, they're weakening the economy, okay? Because the economy gets too hot, that's what causes inflation. So, um, and then when, we, when the economy weakens, this guy comes in the picture. So, um, and again, Dolly, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, recessions, uh, so and we're going to call a tiger the recession, okay? So, um, and, you know, uh, and he's thinking to himself, oh, wow, economy, weak in the economy, this, 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 this is where I come in. We're going we're, we're gonna to ride on this economy. We're going to tear it all the way down. So, um, and... Okay, that was, uh, if you want to hear that, that was a Warren G. regular amount up. I would say that, but I really don't have enough bass in my voice to really give it the emphasis that they had in the video. But anyways, though, and that's what, that's what he, so, so we, we, got our, we got our tiger here, and he's calling all his friends, but all his friends end up being a whole bunch of paper tigers, 
And this is um, so, and then that's what's that, that's what's kind of happening. That's what they're predicting to happen with the recession that they foresee to happen this year. It's going to be a lot milder than they were originally expected. Okay, so instead of just a whole like. A pack of tigers, you know, you have one guy that's like, hey, you know, I want to hurt you. And you're like, okay. And um, so um, I'm going to show you a chart here next on how we get around that. So this is you right here. <laughs> this is the recession. <laughs> and you need to get to the other side. <laughs> so... <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know how I did these slides is I just, you know, with Dolly, Google Image, and OneNote, where I just would write out the, would write it out, then screenshot it, then crop it, and put it in the PowerPoint. So, <laughs> anyway, so, so we want to get to the other side. We want to get through the recession uh, because, um, because, you know, it's a lot easier to get through one tiger than it is a whole bunch, all right? But, you know, even though they're predicting a mild recession, you know, they could be wrong, and we could end up with Rambo Tiger. And, you know, Rambo, you know, he, he took on, like, uh, whole armies and defeated them. So it doesn't mean the recession, it's like, that's what they're speculating, that the recession is going to be weaker. But there's all sorts of things that could happen, you know, that could, that could make it a, a stronger recession. But, you know, I think, we could, I think we could be, you know, rest a little bit easier that it's not going to get as bad as some people thought last year. All right. So, um, but here's where we're, here's why we're scared. You know, we're, we're in the tech market and uh, tech industry and, and, and we hear all the time, you know, there's been 100,000, this just came out this week, there's been 100,000 layoffs in tech in the last six months. All right. Now that's actually not a terrible thing per se, because what was happening was tech was taking all the jobs. Everybody was going to work in tech. So, you know, now that these, now that, uh, there's a lot of layoffs and tech isn't hiring. You know, a lot of other companies that actually need people can start hiring. So, and this is what happened. This just came out yesterday. This is, you know, on my flight, I was reading this. Um, the jobs report came out and there was 517,000 people hired in January. So even if, you know, tech laid off 100,000 and we're thinking, oh, that's terrible. You know, we, you know, there was 517,000 hired in one month. So that, that's, you know, the economy is still chugging along pretty good. So and we're getting inflation in check. So it's, 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 we might be able to, like, not crack that pot. So, um, but how worried should we be? Now, I, I will tell you that there is, um, uh, if I tell you all this stuff, and uh, if, if you're scared of spiders, and I tell you all this stuff about why you should be scared of spiders, you'd be like, okay, well, now you see a spider. You're like, okay, that spider's not going to kill me, but I'm still scared to death of it. But, you know, and that's fine. So um, the stuff I'm going to tell you, I'm not saying, oh, you don't have to be scared. You don't have to be worried about anything. I'm just saying, let's make smarter business decisions. All right. So let's think about this. I'm just going to go through this real quickly. Um, but this is the, the key to this is you have a line that goes up. This is a, what was about $15. This is about 5000 That's 1950 to 2020. And that's gone up. But let's look at some things that happened. In, 19, in 1970, there, like in the 70s, there was like uh, an oil embargo where, remember, people were standing in line, like they had to only, you could only get gas on certain days, you were sta standing in line and stuff like that. That was pretty, and, and back, oil run, runs the world right now. Back then, it really ran the uh, world. Um, and this is what happened. It's almost negligible in that straight line, okay? This is, this is the 9-11 tax followed by the tech bubble bursting. Two, two major, major events back to back. Look, look how minor of an event that was in the long term of things. So um, global financial crisis. You know, we were almost trading sheep on the corner for like food, you know, because, uh, and look how minor that was. Um, this was. This was COVID, that drop right there. So we could see that, you know, these events that just seem so, so, so big to us right now in the moment, you know, we bounce back from them, you know, not a problem. So it's just like, you know, the news kind of overhypes a lot of this stuff. So, um, so what is a recession? I like my favorite story about a recession is, and some of you might experience this tonight, is uh, you go out and you're, you're drinking with your friends, you're at the after party and you're having fun. And, and, then, and then you go to a bar afterwards and you're like, I should go home. 
And, and then, but somebody says, do you want one more drink? And that's the question. Do you want one more drink? And you say to yourself, sometimes you're like, yeah, I'll have another drink. And then another drink leads to three more drinks and you wake up in the morning hungover as hell because you just drank too much. You pushed it too far. You should have gone home. And that's what happens. That's what causes recessions. The economy is going really, really well. And then it should level off. Okay. It should just, it should go home. It should be like, okay, we're happy right here. But like it gets, it, it gets super excited and everything like that. And you could tell that when, in hindsight, you could tell like when all you had to do is go to a venture capital company and say artificial intelligence or crypto, and they would give you about $10 million. So <laughs> that's when the economy gets too excited. And then and to, to correct that excess, it's like we have to have a recession. So we have to go up and we have to come back. So um, I'm going to skip the slide just to be sure. But there's two different en environments that we're working in. One is um, one environment is uh, where, where we've been in, where everything kind of goes right. It's easy to be in business. It's not easy to be in business, but you, you know, people are buying, the economy is doing well, people have money, they're expanding, they're doing stuff. And you operate a business in a certain way in that. You know, it's hard to really make a really, really tragic mistake. But if things switch and you, go, you get into a different business environment, so um, where you're uh, and like if we get in a recession where things are tighter, people are spending less and all that kind of stuff, you want to you want to realize that you're in a different business environment. I tell a story about you're playing, um, you're going to the carnival and you're playing the game where you just pick a duck out of the water and everybody wins. So it's hard to lose at that game versus the milk bottle game, which is really rigged against you. So um, so you have to you have to know what game you're playing because if you play the milk bottle game like you play the duck game, you'll lose every time. So let's talk about how long this kind of stuff lasts then. So the average expansion, when things are really good, lasts 69 months, and there is 24.6% uh, growth. You know, that's pretty good, right? The average recession only lasts 10 months, and it only we only have about 2.5% loss in growth. So that right there, and if you see these green, this is, um, this is uh, uh, growth. And this is time. So you see all these red marks are really minor compared to all these great big bluish green like triangles. So we could see that, you know, even when we're having recessions, even when we're in it, it's not that bad. And when, when things are good, they're much, much better. Like this is seven times longer. But here's the thing. So why do we make such a big deal about recessions and economy and everything like that? It's because psycho psychologically, we, um, we feel uh, a loss three times more than we feel the gain. So it's always going to be, um, it's always, the bad times are always going to feel worse than, uh, than they actually were. And we're going to like discount, the good, always discount the good times. It's like if you find $20 versus losing $20, they've done these psychological studies, you will feel three times worse losing $20, uh, $20 than you will finding $20. So, um, and, but if we understand these numbers and be like, hey, you know what? I know things aren't great right now, but they're only going to be short for, they're only going to be not great for a short period of time. And then they're going to be really good for a long period of time. All right. So, um, and I want to talk to you about this too. Why, why the stock market is misleading. So in that slide for 70 years, I showed the stock market. And that, over a long, long period of time, we could use the stock market to tell us something. In the short period of time, it's worthless. It's not telling you anything. It's misleading you. It's it's crazy, and I could pull any six months in history and show you the, and, and show you these kind of things. So um, this and so and you and you hear the stock market on the news. You hear it all the time. People talk about it, and they can they confuse the stock market with the economy. Stock market with the economy. They're different. Main Street versus Wall Street. They're different. Look at this for example, and you tell me if anybody in here could tell me that they felt this way, I I, I will give you ten bucks. Um, so 20%. So take this, take from about September, the end of August to, to the end of September. So we'll say September. Imagine September 20, 2022. Think about that. Think about if uh, at the beginning of September to the end of September, do you feel your business was worth 20% less? Did you, did September 1st, you're like, okay, this is what my business worth. September 31st, you're like, damn, I'm worth 20% less in my business. No, no, no one ever thought that. Okay. But the market will tell you that it went down 20%. So, um, 
So, um, uh, and then again, think of two weeks ago. All right. Think of your business now versus two weeks ago. Do you think your business is worth 10% more than it was two weeks ago? <laughs> no, you don't. So this is why when, when people get all worried about the stock market and everything like that versus their business, it's just these, these moves, they're, they're not related. These are people trading, you know, fast, you know, um, they're not related to, you know, the economy, your business and everything like that. Your a client is not, a client is not green lighting a project because in the last two weeks, you know, his business went up 10%. It's, it's, it didn't happen. So this is why when people talk about the stock market, you know, you got to remove that from your business, from your view of your business. But this is what always, um, uh, this is what always gets us right here. So um, it's, I call it the cycle of emotions. Um, and it's the funny thing is when, when business is great, we're really excited, we're really happy. At that maximum point of our most excitement and things are going at the absolute best, it's the time when there is the most risk because that's when things are going to be the best and they're going to come down from there. Okay, but that's when we're most, most excited to start something new, do something, invest, do, do something crazy, okay? And that's when there is the most risk. When there is the most opportunity is when we're so scared and depressed <laughs> and that we don't want to do anything, but that is when there is the most opportunity. So this is, this, this is uh, really key to understand how emotions really could screw us because if we're thinking that, oh, I, I just, you know, I need to go back in a hole and, you know, just, uh, but there's the most opportunity right there. Like Warren Buffett, you know, why Warren Buffett is so wealthy is like when in 2008, when the, when the economy was having problems and, and everything like that, he invested $5 billion. He gave the U.S. government like $5 billion for these enormously, like with this enormous promise of return and everything like that when everybody else wasn't lending money. And he, he made, I think what he made, $17 billion on that. You know, because he was willing to, you know, when, every, when nobody else was lending money, when everybody else was so scared in 2008, Buffett was like, <laughs> I'm going to make money off you suckers. So then that's what he did. He made, so, um, but even in a recession, and that's what I want to show you about that thing with, 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 with the opportunity. Even in a recession, there's a huge bright size of recession. And I'm going to relate it to a forest fire. Because a forest fire is really, really devastating. Okay, it burns down all the trees. You know, you have this black, burnt, like landscape, but three to six months later, if you've ever seen a, where there's been a forest fire three to six months later, you'll see all sorts of like uh, vegetation popping out of the ground, all sorts of new stuff, because what it created was uh, all these trees that burned down created all this incredibly fertile soil, okay? And then what it also did was all these trees that were blocking the sun, you know, and sucking up all the nutrients from the soil weren't there anymore. So all this really fertile soil is getting all this sunlight so you have all this great growth. And that's what happens with recessions. It's tragic, yes. You know, but there is so much opportunity that's created during a recession. And um, all those companies that I mentioned before in 2008 slide, Uber, Square, um, Instagram, Pinterest, uh, Slack, they were all created during the 2008 recession. The, the, the biggest recession we had in except for the Great Depression, in 150 years, all those companies came from them. And you're like, Nev, okay, but nothing started during the Great Depression. How about Disney? The ultimate consumer uh, where you have extra money to spend and only spend money on Disney when you have extra money to spend was started during the Great Depression. So there's opportunity. So a recession will create opportunity. Um, I did an article, uh, I wrote an article in Business Insider um, about what I call the business stress test. Um, and it's pretty simple um, that you take your, any monthly recurring revenue you have, you subtract your expenses, and that's how much money you have to make. Like somebody asked in the last talk um, about uh, what do you do if you didn't make any sales? Like for three months, well, you want to you wanna know what that gap is. If you're not making any sales, how much of your expenses do you have to make up? So, um, and then you take your, um, and then you want to know how much cash you have available. So you take your savings, like any money you have your savings, any invoice work you have out there that's going to be paid, any one-time expenses, and then you have a blank screen. And then you have, um, and then you figure out what your runway is. You take your then available cash, you know, you divide it by that gap and you know how many months you have. So if you have... 10,000, um, if you have 10,000 in available cash and you 
and you um, five thousand a month gap that you like your recurring revenue minus your expenses is five thousand. So you have to come up with five thousand extra every month. You know you could run your business for two months. the The goal is to get that number to to over six. So you want to have a, a runway of at least over six. So you want to have enough money, like enough uh, recurring revenue plus cash, you know to uh, run your business for six months if you got in no new revenue, all right? So um, now you don't want to advance at all, do you? <laughs> now you want to go backwards. <laughs> all right, we're going to get this to work. So come on, Tiger. There we go. All right, come on. Okay. Um, so... Tiger Woods. So, you know, uh, any athlete, golfer, anything like that, when he goes up to hit a shot, he's not thinking of that shot. He, he's not thinking of how to hit that shot. You know, what he's th because he's practiced that shot a thousand times, he's thought of that shot a thousand times, he doesn't have to think, how am I going to do this? Okay? He's not like, oh, shit, the ball's here, I'm in the rough, I got to do this. You know, that is, no, because he's like, oh, yeah, I've practiced it a thousand times, so he goes up and he just hits the shot. So, what I want you to think about then, and this is going to sound crazy, but it's a good drill. I want to think about what uh, think about what you would need to do to run your business with 10% less revenue coming in. 10% sales. You lose 10% sales right off the bat. How would you run your business with 10% sales? And then you know figure out why well, I have to get rid of this. Maybe cut back this. You know maybe you know maybe go out and make sale more sales here. You know, and then think about 20%. And like I said, it, it, when you start, you'll be like, there's no way I could do this. But the thing about our brain is once we start putting a problem in our brain and we start thinking through it and thinking through it, thinking through it, when that, if that problem happens, then, we're th then we've, already, we've already done all the heavy lifting of eliminating the ideas that are absolutely impossible. And we're like, you know what? I did have that one idea. Maybe I can make that work. So now when it happens... We know we have a really good idea of what to do, or at least we start a long way on that thinking. So that, I call it the 10 20 exercise. You know, if you do this, and then when the things actually get bad, you'll, you'll have a huge head start. So, um, how much time do I have? So, um, I'm maybe touch on a couple of these. I will say, um, if I have, I set this up because I, when I added all these slides and did this, I thought I was going to run over. Um, the website, uh, nevharris.com slash WP dash y'all, no apostrophe, WP, nevharris.com WP dash y'all. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a video, like, which would talk was going over all this stuff and a couple more things, and I will send it to you. So it'll be an addendum to the talk where I cover all this kind of stuff. We just did the business stress test. I kept that in there. Reserve account is six months. Um, there's a whole thing on cash flow I can show you. Um... Uh, you could always negotiate, renegotiate with like rent and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Um, so, uh, so what we know, uh, we know recessions are going to happen sooner or later. You know, we know that they're going to happen. Okay. And we also know, uh, we also, and that we're going to be uh, prepared for them. You know, because of the stuff that in that last slide that I didn't show you yet, but. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that that if you if you if you yeah so if, oh oh and we go to that website it, the codes y'all no apostrophe y'all and all that does is tag something to active campaign so that when I finish it I could go back and send it to you it doesn't put you on any email list um, so uh, so we know a recession is going to happen we know we're going to be prepared you know and so that allows us to focus externally and I didn't really talk about this but you know when you when you focus. Um, when, when, we're, when we're worried, when we're scared, when we're, we're upset about things, you know, like recessions, business, and everything like that, we're so focused on our business, we're looking down here, and we're, we're like grabbing the pennies from the floor, but we don't, we're not looking up and ahead and thinking forward where we're saying, oh, there's a pile of like $100 bills over here because we're focused so internally on our problems, we're not looking externally for all the things that could, that could be out. Like I said, you know, recessions have a bright side. All those big companies started recessions. So, um, and here's the thing. Uh, I love this quote. I, this quote applies to so much in life. Um, and especially if you, if you wonder why your customer, a client, a prospect isn't moving, it's this. 
When the pain of doing nothing is greater than the pain of doing something, that's the only time somebody will move. Like the pain of doing nothing has to be greater than the pain of doing something. Because if not, apathy takes over. And apathy is, the, is the, one of the main reasons people don't move forward with projects. All right? So let's talk about... Um, Okay, let's not talk about it. Okay, so um, uh, so here's some things. So when COVID happened, you know, um, there was all sorts of opportunity that was created. People, like, there was people that got worried, you know, business, like, went, went, went to hell, you know, but, and people got really worried, but then there were people like, hmm, there's opportunity out there. And what was the opportunity? E-commerce was huge. I had a friend that was um, um, uh, in e-commerce, and she just she just could not... Uh, uh, she was just so busy. Delivery, you know, everybody adopted delivery. I mean, the delivery with like um, Instacart and those kind of services, uh, Walmart started one. It's, I mean, that that was advanced five years because of COVID. Telemedicine, those big health systems were completely against telemedicine. There was laws against it. All that stuff changed. There was such opportunity created in telemedicine. Work from home, work from home would have probably never happened with these major corporations if it wasn't for all that negative stuff that happened with COVID. So out of all that, uh, out of that, um, with the recession that happened with COVID, with all that quarantine stuff, with how businesses got hurt, all these opportunities came about for it. So I want, so we need to be on the lookout, focusing externally on what opportunities the next recession are going to create for the future. So then I'm going to close with a, uh, a story here. Um, there was a, uh, this is, goes back, there was a Chinese farmer, an old, old, old Chinese farmer, and he had a farm, and he had a son and his horse, and they worked his farm. And the horse runs away. And the villager, and he used the horse to do everything, take the grain to market, do everything. The horse was instrumental in his business. It ran away. And the villagers came and said, oh, man, that's terrible, man. I feel so bad that your horse ran away. You know, how are you going to keep on? And, and his response was, it might be good. It might be bad. And then the next day, the horse comes back, and the horse brings two other horses. And now he has three horses. And so the villagers come, oh, man, you're so lucky. You know, he says, you got all these horses and everything like that. It's fantastic. And he says, might be good, might be bad. So the son is out there training the horses, you know, trying to get them. And the one horse kicks him, breaks both his legs, and runs away. So, and he finds him out there, and he brings him, and he can't walk. And he's, he, he's screwed up massively. And the villagers come, bring food and everything like that. I said, oh, that's so terrible that your son and everything like that has hurt and everything. And he says, might be good, might be bad. And then, you know, and he said, well, how could that be good? How, you always say this. How could this even be good? Your son is like, well, never, we can't walk anymore. And uh, the next day, the, the, this province they lived in was governed by an evil warlord. And he sent his people wherever and he wanted his next war that he wanted to fight. Uh, he was getting all the kids from the neighborhood and he was going to use them as cannon fodder to just be slaughtered. And he came in and said, we're, we're here to get your son for the war. And he said, my can't, son can't walk. You know, and uh, so, you know, son didn't have to go and get slaughtered in, in the warlord's um, personal battle. So, um, you know, in that situation, you know, might be good, might be bad. So, um, so if we look at things that, that way, I'll leave with this. We're going to have a recession, either this year, next year, or five years. So we have to, every time there's an expansion, we have a recession. It could be small. Um, and it's going to suck, <laughs> to be point blank. <laughs> and, uh, but here's the thing. In the end, whether it was good or it was bad, is up to you. I've told you, like, I showed you that, you know, we can do it um, if, uh, you grab the video, I'll show you exactly how to get through it, you know, things to do to get through it, and then there'll, there'll definitely be opportunity to credit for it. So, um, like I said, you know, you could, uh, good for you or bad for you, you know, that's, that's your choice. All right, that's my talk. Any questions? <laughs> sure.
how does this apply to a startup where you don't really have a, a steady supply of income yet, but you're you, you're trying to come on the market? What does a recession do to you in that situation? So, uh, if you're a startup, well, uh, you if if you take the example of 2008, you know um, all of those companies began in a recession. So. If I was a startup, I would just have, you know, be sure, know that I wouldn't overly spend. I would be much more cost conscious. If I was starting a business in a recession, I'd be much, much more cost conscious, uh, you know, at the money I was spending instead of going, um, uh, instead of going out and hiring a lot and buying the best and the brightest in technology and everything like that. I would start out really slow. I'd, I'd be much more careful of my costs. You know, and just slow, slow roll it out. And if you're starting in a recession, I mean, I would look, like I said, I, I would be laser focused on finding those, those opportunities that it's going to create. And I'd focus my business on that. Anybody else? Can you give us the link again to where we can get the way to survive this notes? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, nevharris.com slash WP dash y'all, W-A-L-L. Y-A-L-L. And then the, then the code is y'all, W-A-L-L. And then um, I would love feedback on this. If you thought this was like really uh, uh, crazy because like I, I just wrote this in the last two days. I kind of scrapped the original talk because I thought, well, this is some really positive kind of information that people could use. So if, if you thought this was too like over the head or something like that, please let me know. There's another question. If your slides will be there or on Twitter and if maybe that other link might be on Twitter as well. Ah, yeah, sure. I could tweet that out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. why not? In the last years, the uh, United States uh, used a lot of uh, people overseas to do the job. What do you think uh, it will happen after the recession? Do we have more people uh, here? Uh, or, or, or we will do also overseas people to, to do our jobs? So, I <laughs> love the question. Um, <laughs> To answer that question, well, I think in the tech industry, you know, um, jobs are going to, uh, gonna, you know, we're going to use people, um, you know, in, in other countries like India and in the Philippines and everything like that, which is, um, so I think it's, it's, I think it's more to that. Um, I think, um, uh, I think if, if you want, like, put our jobs, I think, I think AI and outsourcing, you can't AI and you can't outsource problem solving. So if you're solving problems, then you're just hiring the people to implement the problems you're solving. So um, if you want to talk about in, in uh, manufacturing, I think a lot of in supply chains, I think we've realized we've hit the limits of globalization where you know we have these long supply chains spread out to uh, maximize to the penny. I think those are going to shrink massively. and Not massively, but I think they're going to shrink a lot, like Apple is trying to move a lot of their production out of... Um, uh, China, because they realize the risk of having such centralized production in China, and they're looking at Vietnam and somewhere else too to build more factories. Because yeah, so um, yeah, and I think more more manufa more of the supply chains are going to be less spread out. But in the tech industry, it's going to continue to so. All right. Do we have one more question? Are we good? Oh, here we go. Hey, Nev, thank you for that. Sure. Uh, your slides are a little confusing to me. I apologize. That's okay. Um, the one thing um, that just occurs to me while you're talking about this is that we all have set costs. Like, if just when I walk into my office in the morning, I've got the monthly Adobe subscription. I've got, I don't know, plugins, QuickBooks online, all these things. I've never taken the time to actually add it up. I mean, do you recommend, almost like when people do a budget for your home, like your living expenses, your personal expenses, do you recommend doing something like that? I mean, looking at, I don't know, there's some things that you just have to have to open the doors, to open your business. I don't know, your thoughts? Oh, know. yeah, 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 I have a whole course on budgeting. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, you have your, you have your, 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 um, you have your, 
fixed fixed cost. You know, I I call them the keep your lights on cost, the cost that like that you just talked about, and you have to know what those costs are, because that's that's the that, that's how much. They go up all the time, all the time. every year. <laughs> yeah. And that's you should you should come. Um, so yeah, I did. Uh, I, t I talked about in in the original presentation. I talked a lot more about that, you know, and I scrapped a lot of that stuff. But yeah, you need to keep an eye on yeah your cost because when you're like if your costs are going up, you know, you need to be raising your price, you know, and whatnot. Um, and because uh, you you want to keep you have your project related costs are just going to come in when you have when, when you bring in new work any of your fixed costs and then um, and you can get into you know uh, if you um, you can get into problems like with if you're not meeting those fixed costs so because you have them every month no matter what as with a project related cost you only have it when you have a project so yeah I think that I have I have um. Uh, message me on Twitter. I'm sure I've done a link on budgeting that I'll send you. Well, thank you, Nev. Sure. I appreciated the message of resilience and um, keeping our head up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's give him a hand.